do you have a life's mission? Rather, do you have a vision for the next one year, the next five years, or the next 10 years of your life? Well, today's talk is going to be about a man who is on a mission to make India litter free. His journey is going to inspire you and take up your passion to the next level because you're going to want to do things that you've never done before. I, I'm Gurat Singh Shapuri. I'm a business turnaround coach, and I'm proud to be hosting today's Seek Talk. Our guest today is known as the Plogman of India. Now, he's a marathoner. He's a traveler. He's an entrepreneur, and he's the founder of Bloggers of India. Now, this movement was created in 2017 as the first such movement to combine Fit India with Swachh Bharat. It's incredible how they combine the two because he has now organized over 500 blogging drives in 75 cities across India and created trends like trash workout and hashtag plastic upwards. He has also set the world's record for the longest blogging run of 50 kilometers in Kota, Rajasthan, which was actually done earlier this year in January 2020. And it took nine hours and 15 minutes to complete. And he also got inducted in the general knowledge of India as the blogging ambassador of the country. He is the one and the only Ripu Daman Singh Dev Lee. Welcome Ripu Daman to Seek Talk. So awesome to have you here. Thank you so much, uh, Kuraj, and thank you, Seek Talks, for having me. It's wonderful and an honor to be here, especially because it's the Earth's Day, something very close to my heart. So thank you very much. Oh, no, it's, it's the timing couldn't be better. We arranged Ripu Damam to be here on the day that is most important to him and should be the most important to all of us. Now, welcome, viewers, and thank you for taking your valuable time to be here. You're going to get a lot of learnings today, and you're going to get a how plan and understand how it takes and what it takes to become extraordinary and create impact. We're going to give you a game plan today. Now, before that, let me tell you a little bit about Sikh Talks. Sikh Talks was an initiative by the Sikh Chamber of Commerce and Samir Singh. It's a platform of learning and motivation and inspiration. It's about human values of growth and scale and global impact. And it's where we bring you icons, just like Ripu Daman Singh. Now, Ripu Daman, Hang tight a little bit because I'm going to tell everybody the key takeaways that we're going to get from today's session. So today we're going to learn how cleanliness can lead to a more fitter you. We're going to learn about how each of us can contribute to the healthier environment. And it doesn't take that much time or effort, by the way. And we're going to learn how a single person, just like Ripu Daman, can bring a change and revolution and how we can all do it. And it's not that easy, but it takes a lot of perseverance. Riputaman, by the way, how are these relevant to today's situation? Well, it's extremely relevant to today's situation, especially because um, we're all in a lockdown right now. Yes. And we are seeing how just by humans being locked down in their homes, we all can see a visible difference to our environment, to our mother earth right now, right? Absolutely. So I think uh, it's a learning for all of us that stands us. The yes. environment is wonderful, the mother nature is wonderful, the earth is wonderful. So why can't we keep it wonderful and amazing as it is when we are yeah. out there as well, right? So so we need to learn to be in uh, harmony with nature yes. and um, and it doesn't take a lot. It, it's, yes, it's an effort, but I think we can all do it. And also, you know, uh, for our viewers, this whole message today is so relevant because in lockdown, what we are doing is we are all making a personal sacrifice for the greater good of the nation and the world and each other and the elders and the youngsters of our society so that we can prevent getting corona for ourselves. You and I might be fit and it'll come and pass, but we might make others very sick. And the determination and the perseverance that we're going to learn today is going to help us along. Thanks, Ripu Daman. And uh, viewers, by the way, do stay till the end because Ripu Daman has a surprise bonus tip that he's going to reveal right near the end. By the way, here are the rules of engagement. Viewers, in the next 45 minutes, we're going to do our job by giving you the most hard-hitting thoughts and the ideas and solutions that are going to blow your mind. And you have to do your job by dropping in comments and questions. And I'll put them on the screen. When Rupi Doman is talking about certain things, I'll throw your questions on the screen. Then they're relevant at the right time. Rupi Doman, are you ready? Absolutely. Ready? I have a series of questions I'm going to ask you. And the first one is, 
can you please tell us what blogging means and how a happy-go-lucky youngster like you became the blogman of India? Uh, well, blogging is, I always say this, it's a fancy term for cleanup. Yeah. Right? So uh, basically, when we started, we wanted to do something which was cool, which was interesting. And I, being a runner myself, running marathons, I started this with my running group with a, with a few uh, running friends. And automatically, it became a running uh, and cleanup movement. Now, uh, the mission statement was, I wanted to make cleaning up other people's litter the coolest thing to do in India. <laughs> so, trying to make something look cool, sound cool, and not having a cool term, not yes. really cool. Right? So, the cool term we got from Sweden, which is blogging. And that's how we renamed ourselves to Bloggers of India a few months down uh, the line as we started our mission. Oh, wonderful. I thought, tell me if I'm correct, I thought blogging means picking up litter and jogging. Is that correct? Yes. Ah, I knew it. I knew it because I kept thinking, what does it have to do with fitness and what does it have to do with running? Years ago, I remember we had just migrated to Canada from the US. I was in class ninth and I had a habit of showing up to school a little bit late. So we had oh, to do social cool. service. So at lunchtime, we were given a stick with a kunda at the end, and we had to actually pick up garbage and put it in a garbage uh, in a garbage bag. And you know what? I thought it was embarrassing, and I thought the kids would look at me and laugh, but nobody ever laughed, and we felt good about what we were doing. And you're doing that not as a hobby, but you're doing that to change the nation. And I think that is that is remarkable, wonderful. All right. So my next thing is, I wanted to ask about what is this run to make India litter free? I've been researching you on the net and I'm going to throw some questions at you that you're not expecting because there's some trophies behind you I'm going to talk about as well. What is this run to make India litter free and how did it become the biggest national cleanup drive? Um, run to make India litter free um, is my most ambitious campaign till date. So we've done this or uh, continued this mission, uh, the Bloggers of India mission for the last couple of years. And me and my team, uh, we we went across the country. We did this in a lot of cities across the country yes. and got a lot of volunteers and participation. It was time to take it to the next level because the idea or the intent was always from day one to involve yes. all 1.3 billion Indians. So you had to do something groundbreaking. And that's how Run to Make India Little Free happened. It became a, an unprecedented, unprecedented campaign in the world where I was running and cleaning up across 50 cities in as many days yes. and got people involved on ground, on uh, social media. The government got involved, various other organizations got involved. And that's how we could make it a huge national movement, especially by because it was combining both Fit India and Swachh Bharat. Oh, wonderful. Now, uh, let me ask you, uh, because Swachh Bharat is such a national campaign and it's, it's at the pride of a lot of ministers and a lot of uh, babus and public servants, did anybody ever try to uh, stand in the way of you doing your good work? Did anybody ever say, Because, you know, sometimes when we are doing good, people do get in the way and we are not full of a country. We're not full. Uh, we don't have a country full of enablers in the social service. Let's be honest here. Uh, how did, how did that work out for you? Well, I mean, first of all, um, just to go back and to talk about this part of the mission, yeah. right? One of the few things that, that we were, we tried to change was, uh, I mean, people did ask me question, why are you doing this? This is not your yeah. job. Right. It's looked down upon, like you talked about your embarrassment as a kid uh, while picking up that little in Canada. I mean, that's prevalent all across the country. It's supposed yeah. to be a particular uh, segment of the society's job, not your job. Right. So your family, your parents, yeah. society, everyone talks about it. It's looked down upon. B, uh, when we look at these people, the rack pickers in the morning, we call them Tatrevala. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess I'm, I can use Hindi words as well. I mean, no, one kidding. of the things that we wanted to do was we told people that these are Safai Walas. There's a certain class to them. We are Katre Wala because we throw litter, right? So these were ah, small, small things yeah. that we were trying to change. Like yes. very small things that are in our brains, in our minds, that have been fed to us over centuries, over decades. Yes. And we were trying to change those perceptions. 
during the campaign i mean while if you talk about the government and babu and all of that bureaucracy yeah. one of the fundamentals of this mission or everything that i do in my life throughout my life as well as the last few years is yes. that we do our work we focus on what's in hand rather than trying to approach people to get them on board and that's no. what happened with yes oh sorry i'm so sorry to cut you up i wanted to actually dig a little bit deeper and i want you to i want you to tell us did any did any agency or civic servant civil servants or any uh, state government ever try to hijack your events and claim claim them as their own um well i mean it's not just my mission that's part and parcel of life i think when some if if and when something like that happens you should be proud of the work that you're doing because you've done something remarkable yes. if and when that happens right so uh, yes it might have happened but from day one the mission's not been about one person it's yes. about the mission the mission is much bigger than one person it's yeah. it's the bloggers of india movement we want each and every citizen to be a blogger to be a responsible yeah. citizen so when the government gets involved when the babu get involved um and because they approached us looking at yeah. our work it was a lot of cooperation from that side as well so i can't even complain wonderful that's excellent now riputam and give me a quick moment because there are a few people who have just joined in who have just joined in a little late now we are talking to riputam who is the blog man of india and he's telling us how cleanliness can lead to a more fitter you secondly he's telling us how one can contribute towards a healthier environment and it doesn't take that much and third he's telling how a single person can bring real change a revolution and it's not that easy but it takes a lot of perseverance so viewers do stay till the end because ripu daman is going to give us a bonus surprise tip that he's going to reveal at the end now my next thing is and by the way viewers please feel free to throw up your questions as well because we have an extraordinary young man with us put up your questions i'll throw them at the screen at the right time now what's the story behind the title blogman of india um so like you're aware we spoke about blogging all right yeah. so that's that's a concept that we started um, and then we adopted the term blogging and we renamed ourselves to bloggers of india so i I've, i've been interviewed across the world uh, i mean one of the first interviews that i had or features was in american tv on cbs news uh two and a half years back and similarly oh. a lot of global media has covered us uh with a few titles uh one of the first titles that i got was india's first blogger when global media started covering us uh yes. but one of these fitness magazines um they did a four or five page interview on our mission and that's how they gave the title of blogman of india uh, yes. that you you're picking up trash you don't have a cape but you're doing something great uh yes. and i like the title so yeah i mean that's how the title came to me wonderful now uh, now tell us about some of the prizes and the certificates and the trophies you have behind you because we're not going to let you go without knowing what you have going on behind you well i mean the trophies and the mementos are there as part of what you do people's appreciation towards it uh but i also do believe that everything that i do or what we do is bloggers of india is very common sensical yes and if if i tell you what i my main goal or end goal is with all of this it probably might come as a surprise but the end goal is to uh, to come to a day where people like us are not needed when everything uh-huh. everyone becomes responsible when yeah. people just just become a little aware towards their nature live in harmony then people like us are not required but one of the most cherished um certificates or mementos I'm that i have let me just put I'm that on the screen yeah is uh is this fit in there if i think i it's uh it's you can view it right right yeah absolutely okay, so so basically that's the fit in there is like certificate um uh, naming me as the blogging ambassador of india it's been signed by uh, the sports minister yeah Uh, yeah really and it was received by my mother so i think that's the biggest movement if i can call it that way because my mother was there to receive it on my behalf and she was i could see the pride in her i think that was a moment that i can't forget although i have the pictures too if even if i forget i can remember that moment. wow that's incredible that's incredible now 
going into some instances of your life, you were expelled from college, becoming the only student in his 36 year old history to go through that process. And then you went on becoming the president of the student council. Take us through that journey. Well, I mean, we all have our shares of uh, different phases and different things that we've done. Some good, some bad, and some ugly. Uh, yeah. I have no different. There's a fundamental that I follow in my life, which I realized later that I've always followed in my life, is that try everything once in life. Yes. So probably I was, I was trying to do that, but yeah, I was expelled for uh, something that I hadn't done. Uh, I was a, I was made a guinea pig out of it. Um, I mean, I was expelled, if I can call it uh, allowed. I was expelled for ragging that I never did. Uh, and I took it chin up. And um, then, long story short, um, I was then, uh, the it was curtailed to suspension for two weeks. And then uh, I was outside the hostels. I wasn't allowed in the hostels after two weeks as well. So for the next six months, I was living all alone. For the first time, this 18-year-old pampered child just out of his home, living outside with no other people. So I used to go to the college and come back. During that time, on those journeys from college to hostel when no one was around, yeah. I did a lot of introspection and I realized that I was very naive in the first place to be actually expelled as well. The situation that happened, uh, the, the whole situation that happened could have, uh, if I was a little street smart, I would yeah. have completely avoided being expelled. But tell you what, um, that expulsion thing that happened to me was the biggest learning that I had in my life. And I would not want to change that because through that journey of six months, when I was exp uh, expelled from hostels as well, this yes. boy, naive boy turned into a man, right? Wow. And, and <laughs> I, I wouldn't change any of that. Afterwards, uh, I, because I was reading your biography online uh, at a certain website that you were holding out a pretty good MNC job and you quit that to get into blogging. The risk, tell us, didn't you feel that was a huge risk? <laughs> Um, so if I look back at my life, I have taken um, a lot of these decisions. Like I said, there's a fundamental in life that I follow that I yeah. realized later on that you need to try everything uh, once in life. Otherwise, how do you know what is it that you're good at? What is it that you're passionate about? So yeah. um, I'll give you a few instances. I got my first job with HCL yes. and I left that in about eight months without having another job, just because I thought that wasn't my calling. I mean, right. HCL is it's a great company, uh, but I leave that uh, with no job to then try to get into a startup, which I got two, three months late. So I was at home for two, three months without a job in hand. And this was very early on in my career. And there are yeah. multiple such instances. So I don't look at risk as risk. I look at it as an opportunity. I look at it as an opportunity to explore what I'm passionate about yes. and what I can do, not just for myself, but can I give back to the society? Can I give back to Mother Earth? Can I give back something to the country? If I can do that, I don't think that is a risk. I, I would like to explore that. Now, I want to go a little bit deeper in risks because you started something that was unheard of. In the initial days, everybody goes through struggles and challenges what was what was the struggles and challenges you faced when you became a blogger and uh, when you started all these drives and all these uh, uh, marathons? Were there funding efforts uh, that you had, or and who funded this stuff, anyways? By the way. Okay, so uh, last question first. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's a bootstrap mission till date. So okay. after that high flying MNC job that you're talking about. I took a sabbatical and I started something on my own as well. Took a product, took a technolo technology product from the US and yes. tried to start something on my own, which was doing very well in India as well. But I was feeling that I was missing something. That itch yes. to give back to the society, Mother Earth and country was still, I mean, giving me some sort of sleepless nights. So that's when I decided to plunge full time into this. And whatever savings that I had, over yeah. my career of seven to eight years, I put all of those savings into this mission. So it's been a bootstrap mission um, till date. Now, how do you sustain then? Uh, because 
uh, I know that this is not social entrepreneurship. I know that your mission is too big for that. How do you make it sustainable? Because we all have to have it. We all have to eat. How do you get your bread and butter out of it? You have quit jobs that were paying you lakhs to do something that you are now paying the nation back. How do you boot your? How do you boot your strap? Bootstrap yourself forever in this? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's a valid question and a and a question that is on my mind right now as well. After having done this for three years, um, so through your platform as well, I mean, yeah. if there are if there are like-minded people, organizations who would want to be a part of it, um, through your platform, I would also like to share that over the last three years, the seventy-five odd cities that I've covered personally and over five hundred blog drives that we've done. Throughout yes. that, and through the government's uh, support, we've covered or touched more than a crore people across the country. So wow. more than a crore people have already participated in the Bloggers of India movement. It's a huge movement, but it feels like we've just started. There's a long way to go to really achieve that dream of a litter-free India, and to have people like me redundant completely, so that we are not needed. So if there are like-minded people, organizations yeah. who believe strongly, who are passionate about this. And would like to support uh, my mission, which should be yeah. all of our mission. Then all please reach out to me, and we should talk about it. However, uh, during the Run to Make India Little Free campaign, I did have a couple of partners who were uh, who were partners and sponsors as well. A couple of them being um, Reliance, for that matter, was our title partner. We had Nissan India on board as well, and a couple of uh, like radio partners and broadcast partners. I would also like to mention my my team or people who supported me from uh, day one. Some of them you had on your uh, platform as yeah. well before this. For example, the Super Seek team uh, have been my yeah. uh, huge supporters and my partners. Um, there are my other co-founders as well, this Christine Pemberton and a few other people who always supported me. Um, so yeah, all of those people have been uh, amazing. We've got a long journey to go, and we need more and more hands on this. No, the super sick, the super sick uh, run people are awesome. Uh, Gurpreet and Rajiv, they are incredible people. Now, because they're on their mission, but let's come back to your mission: the run to make India litter free. In this campaign, you must be a busy guy. What does your day look like during this campaign? What What is your day to day in this? I mean, I wouldn't call it a busy guy because let me just walk you through uh, what a typical day looked like. Yes. So we started this mission from Kochi. And then we uh, moved all over south, west, central, east, going up to northeast India with Guwahati, yeah. and then covering all of north up to Jammu, and then back in Delhi we finished it. A typical day looked like getting up at three thirty four in the morning, yes. and then starting wherever we were. For example, in Kochi we were staying at a gurdwara, yes. and uh, from there we started our blogging drive in the morning, doing a little bit of warm up so that we can start to run. Start cleaning up the place where we uh, where we were, and yeah. then running up to the place that we've actually organized a blogging drive where people have to gather, which was generally at six thirty seven a.m. seven thirty, depending on uh, which city we were in. So two hours of running and cleaning up, going up to the blogging drive location, then taking this up to let's say ten, eleven, twelve, or even one or two p.m. sometimes, based on the interest. The atom of people. So we used to clean up up till uh, the afternoon as well, and then from there on, get back into our uh, vehicles to move to the next city. Quickly have our lunches and move to the next city, which was again six, eight, ten hours away. Away. Uh, we used to get there late in the night, sleep for a couple of hours, and then the same routine: wake up at three thirty-four, get into the uh, blogging drive by four thirty-five a.m. Wow, that's the. Riput, tell us some of your favorite memories of these campaigns. Well, from day one, I think um, if I have to just talk about memories, from day one, it's always been the children, uh, schools, uh, teenagers who've been my biggest audience, my target audience, as well as my biggest inspiration. Right. So because we learn from them, their enthusiasm and their willingness to pick this up and be make this a part of them is what. What really makes me uh, so motivated because I believe we have a great future ahead. When I see them doing it, right, taking yeah. it to taking to this activity like fish to water. So 
uh, a lot of these drives that we did in um, during the campaign were with school so i'll give you an example of kundapur we were mm-hmm. in mangalore it's about uh, i think uh, it's about 2 hours uh, from mangalore this little village called kundapur uh, between mangalore and goa and um, so we got an invite from the school they got they heard of me and they said why don't you just take some time out take maybe 30 minutes out and come and address our kids and these are really small kids so the school is up yeah. to 6 standard yes. and we went there instead of a half an hour walk talk we did a 3 hour talk and blogging drive so after half an hour the kids and the teachers were both so enthusiastic that they said we want to do it and there was a beach nearby and we all got into their buses and we went to the uh, the beach and we cleaned it up and there are a couple of videos that i posted about it and that's one of the most magical days that i probably had in the last few years it certainly sounds like it now we have some viewer questions coming in because we're heading to the last segment of our talk where the viewer questions will come in and i still have a couple of more questions now archana is saying that you have a team working with societies and the gated communities of gurgaon considering there's so many dynamic young people here that are willing to do and to do and to help with your good work so sure. thanks archana for uh, first of all for the kind word and the question uh, yes we have uh, volunteers and leaders in a lot of cities including gurgaon for example i stay in delhi i do a lot of drives myself in gurgaon but there are people dedicatedly doing this in gurgaon so um if you could reach out to me directly uh, we can uh, we can discuss on how to take this forward what are your ideas and i can put you in touch with my team and let's do something together but just to uh, give you a little bit more insight one mm-hmm. of the first schools that we adopted was the shri ram school uh, in gurgaon Right. and we adopted the local mandi right next to that school and within 3 months uh, of the kids cleaning up around that mandi this local shopkeepers and the mandi owners and the customers became so aware that uh, polythene bags went out of the way wow. uh, were completely out of their shop right from yes. the time we started to within 3 months so that's the kind of impact that we create especially through these little ones I wanted to now poke a little bit into that. That you have now stumbled upon to another thing. We'll talk about the plastic menace now. I know that you have some very strong feelings on this because the net tells me everything. <laughs> so, what are what is your thoughts on the plastic menace, and do you have any type of game plan in what we can do for that? Well, I mean, my solutions are this. I, I believe there's the simplest. and easiest to follow i Indeed. don't i don't tell you a whole list of things that you could do yes. i just say a few things one is that let's start with one single item to completely shun from your life anything and i can give you simple examples Indeed. it could be uh, it could be single use plastic bottles it could be polythene bags it could be straws and not yes. just plastic straws by the way my my fight if i can call it that way this is not against plastic just plastic it is against single use anything yes. because the litter that you see on the roads is not just single use plastic it is single use anything so yes. which means that we are using it and dumping it off somewhere yes. so if we can cut down on some of these items if, and i i say straws are stupid and i'll tell you why and you drink all sorts of beverages lassi milk shakes yeah. without do you ever think of a straw it's a question to you and all the viewers do you ever think of a straw at home do you not really not really and i let me ask you the next question then when you take a step outside of your door step why do you need straw in everything <laughs> that's, that's why i question. say that's why i say hashtag straws are stupid so it's that simple <laughs> give us your thoughts on this current pandemic situation what is the way forward and as a social citizen as a socially responsible citizen what should we be all mindful of what is your opinion on this i just say two things one is please stay at home there was a lakshman rekha drawn for a reason yes uh, without having a left or a right or a center agenda whatever agenda that you have i think 
in this yeah. case i say let's put humanity back in humanity and the only way you can do it if you don't if you're not part of any of the essential services stay yeah. at home b i'm oh. oh, please go ahead because i'm going to ask b. you a follow up question and maybe you can okay. answer it right here because is there a silver sure. lining into this so please go ahead uh, what were you saying b sure okay so yes i'll answer the silver lining question after this but yeah. b a lot of us don't realize that we are now dealing with another set of waste that we weren't used to earlier a lot of us a large part of our population still doesn't know how what to segregate in terms of dry and wet waste a lot of people tell me that the leaves fallen from the tree or their bushes or their uh, in the garden are yes. is dry waste I'm sorry that's wet waste that's biodegradable waste you can make compost out of it right so you need to first understand there's a dry and wet waste and you need to segregate very well just the dry and wet waste uh within your homes but now a lot of people a huge population is utilizing gloves and masks yeah. on a regular basis disposable gloves and masks this is hazardous waste this is biomedical waste now right so it's important when you are putting that into your uh into your dump and giving it out to the municipalities the sanitation workers should not be as at risk and for that all you need to do is properly wrap it up in a in a newspaper or something and then keep it separately and tell the sanitation workers whoever is picking up from your home yeah. that this is biomedical or hazardous waste please you uh, dispose it of according wonderful now i wanted to ask you your message because today being earth day what message can you give us for mother earth well it also ties back to your question on the silver lining yes i mean the silver lining is like i said initially um we look at outside we see uh, bluer skies we see yeah. a lot of we hear a lot of birds we hear a lot of animal life around us that was completely disappeared i mean to your uh, to my surprise i probably saw sparrows in delhi for the first time after a couple of decades they completely vanished i mean they were my most uh, most viewed uh, animal or bird when i was a little child right so there is a definite silver lining and for that matter then you i mean we as a nation or as people uh, have survived to the most part even after a one month lockdown of yes. course it has hit employment and my prayers and my best wishes are with uh, with the migrant workers and we should all do something about them but in general the population has survived which means that we can have these these concepts in place where at least once a month we can probably do something like this to let the nature rest to let the environment rest so that's an idea that has come about and and all of us can survive so the government needs to think about it and we as people need to think about do we need to use our vehicles so much do we need uh, to use all the electricity Uh, all the water all the resources that we utilize so much so just to think about it and you will have your silver line eat one of us <laughs> i think if we all you know how people fast just to give their bodies a rest i think if we take a fast from our regular lives once a month for about 2 3 days i think this is what you're getting at that maybe we yes. can give nature a rest and let nature do its thing so that we can do our thing again now what's next for the blog man of india um well uh, like i said the journey is really long it's a long haul it could uh, i mean i am not even looking at 10 years i mean the mission remains the goal and the vision remains to make india a better place whatever it takes i've i've thought of a few things and i've done that over the last couple of years one of the things that we are trying to do uh, is um so put a sequel out to the last year's campaign run to make india a better place where probably um i'll be walking and running across especially to kanyakumari cleaning up uh, across cities that we find on the way so that is one uh, campaign that we are working on yes. the lockdown has kind of put uh, a, a small speed bump to our planning but that's okay that's that's why i think the nature needed it and yeah. we we ought to give that time to nature so that's one thing that we're trying to do and uh, which fit india my association with fit india as an ambassador 
we're trying to take this to each and every district of this country i think there are about 780 districts in the country and we're yeah. trying to do a monthly activity so that it reaches each and every district and the goal is that hopefully on gandhi jayanti once all of this uh, is over and we overcome yeah. the covid-19 pandemic that on gandhi jayanti october 2nd 2020 we'll have close to 5 crore people participating on a single day and hopefully that will happen hopefully we will see india litter free one day um that hope is followed by a lot of action and i want 1.3 billion indians to be part of i i think you know what if ever there was a time you might just have it because now people are so conscientious mm-hmm. people are so aware we have seen clear skies we have seen the birds come back just like you're saying just like you're okay. saying and i think people are now more aware and they understand that look i can make a sacrifice people were not willing to make sacrifices before now we're all making sacrifices like never before yeah. okay my time says now that it's time for that bonus tip that you had promised so what is that bonus you were going to give us well i've alluded to it a couple of times and i made it a point to not explicitly highlight it Uh, okay. because i wanted it to be the the last part so it's not a uh, reward uh, so to speak but you. if you follow this responsible challenge that i am throwing at you you will definitely find this rewarding for yourself at a at a holistic level so the challenge is called hashtag #plastic upwas uh, okay. which is fasting on plastic um, basically i will tell you where this came from i was on my mission run to make india litter free mm-hmm. and i uh, across 50 cities on the road for 18 20 hours a day without the luxury of our home i just had four or five pieces of wrapper or waste that i generated yes. that was it so i was literally living on zero waste i was carrying my own utensils uh, cups mugs so not using anything which came wrapped in single use plastic which mm-hmm. is literally everything on the road so chocolate biscuit maggi yeah. everything pretty much so not consuming any of that and generating almost zero waste so it was an example or a message that somebody without the luxury of the hope can generate zero waste we yes. can do at least one thing to shun from our life and that is how hashtag plastic upas came into being so take the challenge and just tell us one thing that you will shun from your life it could be straws it could be polythene bags it could be tissue paper for that matter i i'll give you an example of coimbatore where Andy. these uh, this this group of uh, elderly uh, gentlemen who had joined me for the drive the oldest person was about 80 years yes. and he saw something interesting happening because he took me for dosa his entire team and after we had our dosa and ate and whatever i did not use a tissue paper even though i washed my hands and all of that And yes. he was pretty surprised because your hands are wet. You want to you want to dry it out quickly. And I'm like, no, I don't need it. I feel I don't need it, and I can do without the tissue paper. And all of them pledged that they will not use the tissue paper. They were like, it's paper. I'm like, it's paper. Cut uh, trees are being cut for it, and it is generating waste. So, if you can decide not to use it, that's your contribution towards nature. So it could be anything which is single use. Yes. Uh, take the hashtag plastic of bar and just tell us one thing that you will shun from your life, and you're contributing towards Mother Earth and a little free country. That is amazing. And to our viewers, I'll tell you from my own personal experience that it doesn't take a long time for this to become a permanent habit. Just like those people, Ripu Zaman is saying that gave up the tissue papers. I remember many years ago I heard a radio address by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam when uh, when he was alive, and he had said that. and he was talking exactly what we're talking about he said that why is it that people go abroad and when they come back to india and say ke is desh ka kuch nahi ho sakta singapore to itna saaf hai and they litter over here and they'll say yahan to kuch ho nahi sakta he said be the change you want to see in people and and that impacted me ripu so much so much that i remember years ago uh, my wife and i were at a restaurant in khan market and i had a I, I I used to feel mirchi in those days a lot. So nowadays I'm used to it. I had just moved to India in those days, and I had asked for a lot of those candies they give with the bill. So I, I I was eating them, and I had put the wrappers in my pocket. Now when I got downstairs, 
I put the, I took those wrappers from my pocket, put them on the dustbin. But like a lot of dustbins in India, it was overflowing. And yeah. I remember because Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam had told me that you know what, it's those NRIs that are most to blame because unhone dekha hua. They've seen better. They know better. Why is it that we are not able to change ourselves? And that had impacted me so much. Two, three months ago, I had I hadn't littered in those days because I was so impacted. And I remember. When my wife and I got to the car, which was about a good four or five hundred meters away, by the way, it was a very far away parked car. I gave her the key and I said, "I'll just come back in a minute." And I ran back because I had put those wrappers on the garbage can, and they had they had fallen out. I was feeling so ashamed and so guilty that I had to yeah. go back. I had to pick them up and put them back in. And wo din hai, aaj ka din hai. I've never been able to litter. And I think the habits that you're telling us, get tissues now use karo because they're not necessary. Why use a straw? I think if we can just do this for Mother Earth and Ripu Daman Singh viewers, I think I think we're going to not only transform ourselves, but so many people are going to be influenced by us. So, with your permission, I just yeah. because to your point, so I give two very specific things is which are extremely critical to everything that we do. And one is three steps to a letter free india and second is pledge for swachh bharat three steps to a letter free india is exactly to your point if i can quickly call them out please do okay step number 1 and and everyone has to do just this nothing else Andrew. step number 1 put your letter in a trash bin only exactly what you did right step number 2 If you see something lying on the road, if you feel like, pick it up and put it in a trash bin. Yes, exactly what you did. Step number three: If you, everyone's problem is that we don't have enough trash bins in India, in our country, or close by. So, yeah. yes, so put your litter in your pocket, in your car, take it back home, segregate yeah. it into dry and wet waste, and give it to the municipality tomorrow. Just these three steps. You will see a letter free country. So it's it's that simple, it's right? That simple. So what you did, what you did, you exactly did those three steps, and that's how you create a letter free country. Because imagine if 1.3 billion Indians do it, yes. you'll not have overflowing trash bins, and you won't trip about trash bin not being there at all. So when you when you tell me that it's time, we can quickly take that pledge because that should be the last maybe 30 seconds. Of what people take away from all of this, we're going to because we we'll cross our hearts and we'll do it. Let's actually why not? Why not? Let's do it right now. How about that? No time like okay. the present. I'm ready when you're ready. If our viewers are ready, if our viewers are ready, say I'm ready to take the pledge. Put it in the comments and, think, and then get those comments in. As soon as we have two, three comments coming in, then we're going to put our hands on our hearts. How about that? <laughs> and um, we'll do this in English, I think, for the benefit of the audience. For the benefit of me as well, because I learned him very late. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So sure. Viewers, just say I'm ready to take that pledge, and as soon as your comments start to come in, we're gonna pay, we're gonna make it happen. Brilliant. Wonderful. So the comments are coming in, Ripu Daman, because there's a bit of a delay between what you see and I see. So let's get started. All right. Okay. All right. So we'll take our right hand. Anji. So generally we put it in the oath position, but because we're on a camera and it's going to be difficult, so let's put this across our heart. Yes. And it's going to be a very simple pledge, but if we all follow it, we will definitely contribute positively towards a little free society. So um, I will say my name, and everybody say I'll say your own name because you're <laughs> pledging for yourself. All, all right. right. I, we start. I repu Daman. I go Raj Shapuri. Take this pledge. Take this pledge. That I will put my litter. That I will put my litter. In a trash bin only. In a trash bin only. Wherever I go. Wherever I go. I will carry my own chola. I will carry my own chola. And say no to polythene and plastic bags. And say no to polythene and plastic bags. Wherever I go. Wherever I go. I will carry my own water bottle. I will carry my own water bottle, and say no to single-use plastic bottles, and say no to single-use plastic bottles, and say no to all kinds of straws, 
and say no to all kinds of straws. And because of all of this, and because of all of this, I will make my country. I will make my country and my surroundings and my surroundings litter free, litter free, and make my country the cleanest country in the world. And make my country the cleanest country in the world. Thank you. Wow! Now we have a contract, <laughs> and it's it's a very simple contract. You don't have to do anything. Really it really is. Wow! This has been amazing. Now, before we sign off, I want to just remind our viewers that in the comments below, we're going to put down the three steps that Ripu Daman has told us about. Ripu, a big thank you to you. Thank you for being part of our program. It was wonderful. Thank you for taking your time to come online with us. And if the viewers want more of Ripu Daman, I'm just going to tell you how they can get a hold of him. Firstly, I have the email address coming on the screen right now. We're going to put this in the description below as well. And Ripu Daman loves to be reached on Instagram and Twitter. These are the best ways to get a hold of him. Ripu, thanks again. A big thank you to you. It has been amazing. Thank you for coming on our program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Buddha. Thank you. Seek Talk. Thank you. Sikh Talks is made, made possible by Samir Singh and the Sikh Chamber of Commerce. We are being streamed live on three Facebook pages and two YouTube channels. And if you enjoyed today's talk and if you enjoyed Ripu Daman, please give us a big thumbs up and write a comment below. Now, I'm going to make sure that Ripu Daman gets all those comments because we love to have him here. And speaking of love, if you love today's talks, do subscribe to the channel and the Facebook page so you get notified the next time we go live. Now, speaking of next time, Join me tomorrow at 4 p.m. sharp, and we're going to go live with the one and the only Mira Swaroop. She is an impact communication coach, and she'll be telling us about the power of words and how we can make a difference just by the choice of words we use, how we can make an impact to each and every person that we speak to, and we can mesmerize them, and we can blow them away. I'm Gulrad Singh Shapuri. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was extraordinary having you here. Please be safe, wash your hands, and stay home. Thank you, and join us again tomorrow, same place, same time.